All viruses mutate. If you get COVID now, it'll be a slightly different virus than what you would have gotten a year before. As we start putting pressure on it with the vaccines, the virus may start to mutate such that it can escape the vaccines. It will try to escape immunity. The question is whether it will succeed or not. We're going to have to watch that virus very carefully in terms of how it's behaving towards our vaccines. We can't let up because if we do, we could be behind the eight ball. The vaccines are on their way. In the meantime, our world once again seems to have stopped. But time is not standing still for the coronavirus. Every day it continues to mutate and evolve. So what does that mean for us? Well, that's a good question with a complicated answer. In the world of virus vaccines, there are two well-known extremes. For example, we have mumps, measles, and our vaccines that were developed in the late 1960s are still terrific against these viruses. And then there's the flu. It's just remarkable how quickly it changes. That's why we need to have a different vaccine every year. Inside the flu virus, you can picture a set of Legos. Every year it can rearrange its genetic code so that it looks different and takes your body by surprise. But inside the coronavirus, it's more like this one long piece that doesn't change. The first thing it means is that's really good news because it's unlikely to change enough so that our vaccines will not be effective. Unlikely, but not impossible. Because the vaccination rollout might take several months, even a year, there's a worry that during that time, the virus will actually start to evolve potentially faster in response to the vaccine. Remember, the first vaccines for COVID-19 have to be shipped and stored at icy cold temperatures. The farther you get from a big airport, the harder that becomes. If you're living in rural California, for example, there's going to be a long delay before these vaccines can get to you. And that's what Riju Das is working on in his lab at Stanford, finding ways to make these new mRNA vaccines last longer outside the freezer. If we can ship them in pre-filled syringes without being frozen, um, then they could go out basically to everybody in the world on the time scale of a few weeks. And that means less time for the virus to mutate and find a way around the vaccine. But even if it does, these vaccines are new technology made from a tiny piece of synthetic genetic material. They do need to be frozen, but they're much quicker to make. If there is an outbreak of a new strain with the RNA vaccine technology, there's a possibility of us very rapidly making another billion doses for the new strain. You might remember Pfizer and Moderna began making these vaccines early on based on the original strain of the virus from Wuhan, China. There's already been one major mutation since then. The mutation basically allows the virus to become more infectious. It infects cells more efficiently especially in cells in the nose and the upper respiratory tract. Ralph Barrick at the University of North Carolina tested the new strain against the old one in hamsters, and it spread more than twice as quickly every time. The mutation is a change to the spike protein that helps the virus latch on to your cells. I think most everyone has seen the movie Alien, right? You have these alien egg, egg pods, and when people come up to them, there's these little flaps that pop open. Opening those flaps lets the alien reach out and grab its victim. But it also leaves the alien vulnerable. Because normally it's closed and protected from host immunity. So this mutation actually makes the virus much more vulnerable to vaccines. The first vaccines all work by training your body to recognize and attack the spike protein. But in earlier coronaviruses, that's been the part most likely to mutate. It's a huge. It, it can approach 35% variation. That's why VaxArt in South San Francisco is planning ahead by taking aim at a second protein inside the virus. If there was any changes, we'd be able to address that much more effectively. VaxArt's formula is slower to make, but doesn't need to be frozen. And it's not a shot, it's a pill. It's just simple to hand out a tablet than it is to give an injection. You don't have to have qualified medical people. It could shipped room temperature. It won't be ready for another year, but that's when we might need it the most. We're not sure how long the immunity lasts when these current vaccines, and it may be important to boost people, give them another vaccine dose. Chief Science Officer Sean Tucker says this vaccine could be especially good at building immunity in the nose and throat. Barrick says that's where a mutated virus could try to live on, even in people who've had the original vaccines. It could change its structure just a little bit to replicate in the nose, but not in deep in your lung. 
And so that would result in a really mild common cold type infection. Though they don't know exactly how the virus will change, scientists do know one thing. Their best weapon is to be prepared. It produce vaccines very fast for when new viruses hit us. I am optimistic that we'll make those investments finally so that we never have to face these pandemics again.